there's a story. You may have heard it before, but you've never heard me tell it. <laughs> Heaven and hell are exactly the same. Big room, big table, lots of food in the middle. People seated all around in chairs. We're talking lots of food, like your favorite thing, it was there. Drink, there. Everything in the middle. In hell, everyone is seated next to one another, and in heaven too, the same seated position, and everyone's hands are clasped to the person to their left and to their right. And in hell, people are reaching forward, trying to bring their food to their mouths, and they can never do it. Their arms are attached to the people next to them, and they just can't get that leverage to move to the mouth. In heaven, everyone, exact same setup, same food that you loved, still there. Everyone's hands attach the person to the left and the right. The difference is the people feed the people to the right and the people to the left, and everyone is satisfied. Everyone experiences the generosity of the person to their left and to their right. Hell is filled with ego and with greed. Heaven is a place of generosity. Generosity, it's such a simple thing, and it can be so hard. In the busyness of our lives, taking a generous approach needs to be made with intention, as the story exemplifies. Generosity can literally save lives. It also is counter to some of the current trends in the world around us, and generosity is deeply, authentically Jewish. When the Israelites stood at Sinai and received divine instruction to build the Mishkan, the tabernacle, the dwelling place for God, Moses tells the people, take from among you gifts to God, kol nadiv libo, everyone whose heart is so moved. When used in this construction in our Bible, nadiv lev, literally a voluntary heart, a generous heart, reflects an understanding that the heart is the source of our motivation. Generosity of heart is not only about things, it is also a spiritual mindset that compels us to openness, kindness, and a demonstration of concern for others. This is how we began to make room for the divine presence in our midst, too, suggests Rabbi Sharon Cohen Anisfeld. How beautiful it is to acknowledge that when we are generous, we also expand the potential for God's presence. However we may imagine God, higher power, our parent ruler, the force of the universe, or the God we may not be so sure of, the mystery to dwell among us. Generosity comes to us naturally. According to Dr. Summer Allen in their paper, The Science of Generosity, it is entirely possible that generosity may be an evolutionary adaptation that has helped promote the survival of many species, including our own. Another example of the innate idea of human generosity is in studies of young children. Even toddlers demonstrate a drive to cooperate, to help others. The difficult part is, as children grow, giving behavior becomes more selective and nuanced. Generosity, though, is good for our older adults, too. Their health can be improved. Studies show that giving social support, time, efforts, or goods is associated with better help, and volunteering is associated with delayed mortality. Today, Rosh Hashanah is also known as Yom Hadin, the Day of Judgment, one of the liturgical moments that attunes us to our true selves, to the potential for this new year, is the Unetana Tokef. This prayer that we will recite tomorrow morning and again on Yom Kippur demonstrates the potential for us to use our generous hearts to change ourselves and maybe even to change our world. The prayer concludes with a reminder, Uchuva utfila utzaka ma'avirin et ro'a hagzera. Repentance, tshuva, prayer, tfila and staka, generous acts from generous hearts 
have the power to change the character of our lives. We need to be Nadiv Lev, generous of heart in at least two ways. Generous with our resources and generous with our spirit. Our greatest resource, resources are our time, our willingness to serve, our learnings, our kindnesses, creativity and brain power, and yes, our dollars. Each of these are understandings of sadaka, righteous acts or justice or charity. Sadaka, though, at its essence, in addition to being a mitzvah, a sacred obligation, are the opportunities we take upon ourselves to ensure our community and its people can thrive. Mitzvot, like sadaka, enable us to connect with other people, with our best selves and with God. There are so many places throughout our city and country and world, including Temple Beth Shalom, that need you and your generous heart. This year, may we also be generous with our spirit. As we find our footing and after the new normal, after two years of pandemic, a generosity of spirit is a willingness to presume goodwill from others. It's demonstrated by an attempt to suspend judgment and accusation in the face of perceived slight and insult and maintain an open heart. As Rabbi Ben Greenberg noted, this sounds simple, but it takes a lot of intentional work to cultivate within the context of community. As a sacred congregation, it is incumbent upon each of one of us to continue to exercise our muscles of our generous spirits. Because, notes Rabbi Greenberg, when we create synagogues bursting and overflowing with generous spirits, we will have developed powerful models of a world redeemed amidst the world that is. Communities that demonstrate trust, respect, and slowness to judge each person within that congregation present a picture of humanity the way we should be all the time, everywhere. How fortunate we are to have Temple Beth Shalom, a sacred community with hundreds of people who demonstrate Nadiv Lev, a generous heart, where even when it's challenging, we cultivate trust and work hand in hand to ensure our congregation and our Austin Jewish community continue to thrive. In this new year, may each of us do our part to ensure that everyone receives food from the hands of their neighbor, just like in the vision of heaven. May our generosity of resources and our generosity of spirit continue to expand in new ways in this new year. And may it be a happy, healthy, and sweet new year for us, for our community, our congregation, and for the world. Can you hear us own? May this be God's will.